Welcome back, I'm Dr. Dai, and we are ready to jump, jump into the last section of chapter seven. We are gonna look at some variations in meiosis. First, let's talk about some errors that can occur. Um, inherited disorders can result from abnormal chromosome behaviors during meiosis. Um, these can be uh, abnormalities in the chromosome number, or they can be structural rearrangements. Uh, these disorders are often severe due to the potential impact on numerous genes within even small chromosome segments. Chromosome disorders are primarily identified through uh, cytogenetics, uh, which involves isolating and microscopically observing the chromosomes. Um, a karyotype, uh, which de details chromosome number, appearance, length, banding pattern, and centromere position is the basis for detecting these abnormalities. Uh, cytologists, so people who study cells, uh, will photograph the chromosomes individually and then create this image like you see here on the slide by cutting and pasting each chromosome into a chart to visualize an individual's karyotype. Um, the chromosomes don't cooperate like that and all line up so nice and stuff. It, it requires lots and lots of images to get all of it. And, put it together like that. Um, among chromosomal disorders, um, abnormalities in chromosome number are readily identifiable through a karyogram. Okay? Uh, these abnormalities encompass uh, duplications, losses, or changes in the complete, um, complete sets of chromosomes. They occur due to things called non-disjunction, where the homologous chromosomes or sister chromatids fail to separate properly during meiosis. Um, non-disjunction risk increases with um, parental age, both maternal and paternal age. Um, non-disjunction can happen in meiosis I or meiosis II, uh, leading to distinctly different outcomes. Um, failure of homologous chromosomes to separate in meiosis I results in two gametes lacking the chromosome and two with two copies. If sister chromatids fail to separate in meiosis II, one gamete lacks the chromosome, um, and two have one copy, um, and one possesses two copies. So you have uh, two gametes that are, are fine, um, one that is missing the chromosome, and one that has an extra copy. Individuals with the correct number of uh, chromosomes for their species are referred to as euploid. EU is a prefix that can mean uh, good or right. Um, so in humans, that would be 22 pairs of matching autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. And remember, you know, in, in males in our species, um, they aren't a perfect match, right? We have an X and a Y, but in females, it would be two X chromosomes. Um, errors in chromosome number make someone aneuploid, meaning that they are an, A-N, without, without right Ploid, without the right number of chromosomes. Um, this covers monosomy, which would be the loss of one chromosome, or trisomy, which is an extra chromosome. Monosomy leads to uh, non-viable zygotes. If you don't have one of the chromosomes, you've lost too many essential genes, um, and, and that you will not create, that, that will not create a viable zygote. Um, while most autosomal trisomies um, also don't reach birth, there are some that do. Uh, trisomic individuals experience um, a gene dose imbalance, meaning that they produce excess amounts of the proteins associated with the genes on their extra chromosome uh, because cells are only calibrated for having two copies of each gene. Um, one of the most common trisomies is of chromosome 21, which results in something we refer to as Down syndrome. Um, this is marked by characteristic features, certain developmental delays, um, as well as early onset dementia, heart disease, a, a whole array of um, very serious health implications. Um, the risk of Down syndrome increases, particularly with maternal age. Um, and we can see that in this figure here, where you can see as the female parent's age reaches, um, as it reaches 40, that's when we see a big jump between 40 and 45, it goes up a great deal. Um, 
leaning up to 40, the change between 20, uh, between turning, say, 25 to 30 is, is almost insignificant. It's very small. But from 30 to 40, we do see a rise. Uh, but even still, that from age 30 to 40, the risk is still very low. It's after 40 and after 45 that we see that really go up. But with advances in in vitro fertilization, um, using IVF can greatly decrease your risk of trisomy disorders because they will preview the um, the zygote, well, they'll preview the eggs in advance and the zygote before implantation to ensure uh, euploidy. Okay. Um, human females and males can function despite carrying different chromosome numbers for X. Um, this is largely due to something called X inactivation. Um, during early development, one X chromosome in each cell inactivates, creating what's called a bar body. And the genes on the inactive X are not expressed. Um, the particular X chromosome in that inactivated is random, um, but all descendant cells will share the same inactivation. Um, this process compensates for the double X chromosome dosage in, in females. Um, obviously, in males who only possess one X chromosome, they don't experience that. There's no, they don't have bar bodies. Uh, in tortoise shell cats, uh, X inactivation leads to coat color variation. That's where you get the, the coat differences. Uh, where heterozygous females will express different coat colors depending on the X chromosome that was uh, inactivated during embryonic cell uh, progenitors. So you have cell lines and some of the cell lines inactivate one of the X chromosomes and some of the cell lines inactivate the other and it produces this cool tortoise shell pattern. Um, tortoise shell cats are always female due to this phenomenon. Very, very rarely you will encounter a male cat that displays this. And if you do, you know that you have just seen a cat with a trisomy disorder. That cat possesses an excess X chromosome, um, which, which can happen. It, it's really, really, really uncommon, but it does, it does show up every once in a while. Okay. All right, now let's take a look at non-disjunctions, duplications, and deletions. So in individuals with an abnormal number of X chromosomes, Cellular mechanisms deactivate all but one X uh, in each cell. This results in X chromosomal abnormalities, uh, typically causing mild intellectual and physical disabilities, as well as sterility, usually. Um, complete absence of the X chromosome leads to non-development. Um, you must have one copy, at a minimum, of the X chromosome to develop into a viable um, embryo. Uh, various sex chromosome number errors have been identified. So we have a the triplo X. Um, has three X chromosomes uh, in an individual. They are assigned female. They experience developmental delays and reduced fertility, though they are not exclusively sterile. There's some range there. Um, we can have XXY, which is referred to as Klinefelter syndrome. Individuals are male with small testes, enlarged breasts, and reduced body hair. Um, the extra X chromosome undergoes inactivation um, to balance genetic dosage, but that Y chromosome is present, and so we get this kind of mixture of, um, of traits. And then we can have Turner, Turner syndrome, which is a single X chromosome. So you're missing one of the X chromosomes you should have. Um, in these individuals, they're female. Obviously, they don't have a Y chromosome. Um, they exhibit a short stature, um, something we call neck webbing. And you, you can Google it if you want to see what that looks like. Um, often there's hearing and cardiac issues, and, and these individuals are sterile. Um, in polyploidy, which is right, having more than the correct number of chromosome sets, so uh, two is the correct number, um, we refer to these individuals as polyploid. Um, so in animals, this is, this is rare. Um, it's uh, seen around in flatworms, crustaceans, some amphibians and fish um, and lizards. 
Um, triploid animals are sterile due to meiosis challenges um, with odd numbering of chromosomes. That's the cells don't divide properly. Um, conversely, polyploidy is really common in plants. It actually enhances their size and robustness compared to um, species matched euploids. And it creates this whole new layer of variability and variation that the plants uh, can produce. And some of these weird polyploid events in plants lead to whole new species. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, all right, so chromosome structural rearrangements. Um, cytologists have, have identified a, a range of structural chromosome rearrangements, uh, including uh, duplications, deletions, inversions, and translocations. Um, duplications and deletions often lead to offspring with physical and mental um, abnormalities. Uh, Cri du chat syndrome, uh, is French uh, cry of the cat, um, it, because of this very particular cry um, that these children have uh, as infants. Um, this syndrome is marked by a nervous system issues and unique physical features. Um, it's the result of chromosome uh, five's small arm being deleted, so the loss of just the small arm, and causes this like this distinct high pitched cry in affected infants that kind of sounds like a cat. Uh, chromosome inversions and translocations can be observed during meiosis when rearranged homologous chromosomes. Um, have to adapt to maintain proper gene alignment um, and pairing during prophase one. So chromosome inversions uh, involves detachment. So, you know, we intentionally have this right crossing over stuff that goes on, but if the detachment occurs and the gene turns, so it's now in the wrong direction or the, the chunk of chromosome, there's usually multiple genes on it, and then it gets reinserted into the chromosome segment, um, so unless the gene sequences are disrupted, inversions primarily just change gene orientation. Um, that can cause mild effects or not. Um, there's some variability there, um, but it's definitely less impactful typically than like a full aneuploid error, right? Like you have the wrong number of chromosomes. This is, it's all still there, it just got turned. So unless, unless the break point is across a gene, which can be catastrophic, um, these are less, less likely to cause a problem. Uh, translocation occurs when a chromosome segment breaks and attaches to a different non-homologous chromosome, reattaches to the wrong thing. Um, translocations can have a range of effects from benign, like you don't even know you have it, to very severe. Um, just depends on the gene position and where it ends up landing back and if you lost regulatory sequences associated with the gene in the process. Um, some specific translocations have been linked to cancer and interestingly enough, schizophrenia. Um, reciprocal translocations involve the exchange of chromosome segments between non-homologous chromosomes and it preserves the genetic information. <laughs> uh, these are these are a little weird, um, and there are some, I'm not going to get into it, but there are some really interesting examples uh, where we think if you look at the evolution of not just humans, but like species in general, you can actually follow where some of these events have occurred that later down the line led to um, the changes in chromosome number and structure that led to new, um, new species. So there's some, there's some really interesting stuff to be seen there. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for chapter seven. Um, happy studying. This is, a, I know it's a lot. Really do take the time to make those comparisons between mitosis and meiosis um, and the things that can go wrong in the checkpoints and all of that so that you have a really clear picture of these are the things that belong with mitosis and these are the things that belong with meiosis. That's, that's the thing that trips students up the most when exam time comes. All right.